Hi, this is Dan here. I hope you're doing well today. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to play a little bit like James Jameson. We'll try and get close anyway. The guy was a genius. But first of all, I'm using a 1968 Fender Precision. I've got James Jameson Labella flat wounds on it. You don't need to have one of these bases. They're very expensive, but some sort of precision pickup with flat wounds will get you quite close. I don't have a mute here, but if you put a little foam sponge mute under the strings by the bridge that will really get you close to the tone. I'm improvising around an E major scale. Now James Jameson was an upright jazz player. He was very, very in tune with, with the chord tones within, within a key. So you know, what does that mean? So we've got E major. And what you want to do is you want to know the arpeggios that lie under each note. It goes like this. And that's where improvising begins. Now let's strip things back a little bit and just play around with root notes. Remember this pattern, okay? We've got E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp. Let's play around with those notes just to start with, but number them and make sure you know the numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six. Because those are our chords and we can go to different chords. So let's go one, six, two, five. You can hear that being a Motown progression. James Jameson rhythms. He used a lot of 16th notes. So at the tempo I'm going, one E and a two E and a chick, 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 chick. You can count it like that. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. Just make sure you're tapping your foot and make sure that you're aware that each beat has four 16ths in it. And that, you know, he was completely in control of, of the rhythms, okay? Almost playing like a conga player, you know, like a percussionist. So let's just take that one, six, two, five, and create a couple of different rhythms just using that. Dun dun, ba bum bum, ba bum, that's all I'm doing. Okay, let's slow things down and figure a couple of things out. Now, the way I'm playing it now, let's do it actually a bar of each, so like this. It gives us a little bit more time to think. Okay, so there, I just did root note. And when I got to the sixth, which is the C sharp, it's a C sharp minor chord, and I'm doing a C sharp minor seven. Now, James Jameson and every decent bass player, especially like session people that used to, he used to have a chart in front of him and he would have to just make up bass lines. So you see, for example, C sharp minor seven, and you need to know that that is, or you know. So first thing to do is just to be completely at ease with, with the arpeggios and the, the harmony of whatever it is you're playing. And then we can play around a little bit with that. So I just went up the, the arpeggio. And then back down. Again, using these 16th notes rhythms, okay? F sharp minor seven, the two chord, it's exactly the same as this. So we can shift to there, second fret. Just using chord turns here. So root twice, and then going flat three, five, flat seven, and then octave. There's that B. Now we're in the key of E major, so 
Just an E major pentatonic scale. Another thing he used to do that's absolutely crucial is the use of chromaticism. Chroma means color and chromaticism refers to notes that are outside of the scale. And this is a real jazz thing, is getting to the next chord using chromatic notes. Let's try that. Same chord progression. Very Jameson here, so I'm going E. And I'm just leading up to the sixth chord, the C sharp minor, chromatically. And that's just fret by fret. The B is in the, the key, but the C is not. It gives you a forward motion, a bit of tension before the release of hitting the, the root note. That's exactly the same, but now I'm approaching the F sharp minor seven or the F-sharp minor chord, chromatically from above. This one went from below, and then to the B, same thing. Now I'm actually approaching it just from two frets higher. That's a good trick. And just playing around with rhythm. Jameson rarely played the same notes twice and he rarely played the same rhythms twice and he had complete control over over his creativity it was crazy if you listen to some of those bass lines it's amazing some of them are are solid sort of written bass lines but many of them are just improvised let's try the same idea we don't have to approach from the same way every time see f is a wrong note in the key of e So we can go from the other side, E, F, F sharp. This is to get to that F sharp minor chord. Use little rhythmic skips a lot like that. So this is the speed. Ghost notes. Now let's try, let's go to the Let's go there, I'm making this up as you can tell. I'm going F sharp and I want to go to the, the B, that's the five chord. And there's that chromatic lead up to that again. So F sharp, doing a little shift, and I can go G sharp, A, B flat, B. Now let's move to this portion of the bass here. So now I'm here. That's my E major scale. I know the arpeggio is off by heart. So here, let's do this. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. That's exactly the same as down here, but just in this register. And I'm just playing notes from the scale, you know, but linking to the chords using this chromatic approach where you can approach the next chord from above or below. That's from below. You know, you get this lovely lyrical kind of jazzy type sound. So, so far, 16th notes, thinking like a percussionist. We've got our chromaticism and we've got our knowledge of the chord tones, you know. That kind of thing. I'm on the B now. There's our B7 arpeggio. So I'm playing that just with an interesting rhythm, sort of a James Jameson-esque rhythm. You need to listen to him a lot to absorb the rhythm, so, so do that. Let's talk a little bit about technique. So he had this one finger thing, which was called the hook. Which was amazing, really, that he can get all those fast, intricate things going with just that. I'm not doing that. I'm just using two fingers. But one thing that was a kind of a throwback to his double bass playing was the use of raking, which a lot of double bass players do. So, you know, this kind of thing. So there I am using one finger. I'm playing Bs here. So I'm on the ninth fret of the D, playing a B, an F sharp ninth fret A string, and then root note B. See how I'm doing that? Just dragging the finger down across the three strings, that's raking. 
little hammer on there. Now there, I'm just linking the shape that I was using here down to that one, so E. There's our six chord. There's our two. Six. All chromatic movement. Once you get some of these ideas together, get a metronome set on either every beat or two and four to simulate the, the snare drum or get a Motown you know, drum loop and do this. Once you have a few of the ideas, put the drums there and it will give you a lot of pressure to sort of keep in time. The more you do this, the better you'll become. And that's you working on your timing, which is really getting all of these sort of technique ideas, the theory ideas and the sort of the, the thoughts that you have in your head. And it's kind of bringing all these things together with a drum beat. That's when you know you're really, really getting somewhere is if you can if you can do that. As ever, start slowly if you you know, put the drum beat on and it just sounds a bit too difficult. We'll get rid of it and just get back to, the, you know, the shed and just practice your chord tones, your rhythms until you start to get better. Just introduce it gradually. He was influenced, I guess, by anything that he was hearing, which just goes straight in. There's a bit of a soul thing there. So I'm on E, second fret, D string. I've done this pattern loads in lessons, root, fifth, and sixth. And these kind of patterns show up a lot in Motown, so he was using those patterns as well. Yeah, a little bit of articulations there, hammer-ons pull off. There's that A, kind of unusual to play it there, but it gets me there in a nice musical way. A to B, that's the four to the five. Different registers used to do that quite a lot. So something like this. A to the B. And when I'm on the B, and, and I'm not thinking about this, and he certainly wasn't thinking about it when he was reading the charts and making bass lines up on the spot. He was just going with creativity. So breaking things down like this can be a bit awkward sometimes to explain it. But what you want to do is get these things completely under your fingers, the patterns, the sounds, the theory, so that you can just call on it without thinking. So there, just doing that B7, that's where we are now, B7. Going up the arpeggio with a cool syncopated rhythm. Da, 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 da. Syncopation, another thing you used a lot. That chromatic thing. Linking up patterns is such a great thing here. So I literally, I can see an E here and I know, look, there's the six, there's the five, there's the two. That really is a pattern thing. So make sure you learn those patterns. So let's strip things back a little bit and I want you just to learn those patterns and just play root notes. Pick a really simple rhythm and just get to different parts of the bass. You can be quite random with this. I've actually only just done the, the one, two, three, four, five or six chords. It'll all sound good. I'm really not thinking about it. I'm just going to different notes. The one, the two, the three or the five or the six. Either, either here or here. And it sounds quite James Jameson-esque. Add in some chromaticism. Add in some 16th note rhythms and you're really starting to get there. Have flat wound strings, some sort of a, doesn't have to be Fender, but a P bass or a, a precision pickup, which you can get on plenty of different brands. That will get you close to the tone. When I was a kid, I studied that Standing in the Shadows of Motown book. I had bass lessons and I was given that book and I just used it as reading practice, really. And it wasn't until years and years and years later that I stopped reading the notes and started listening and analysing what Jameson was doing and, and, and finding out, you know, these things that I'm showing you today. So that's what I would do. I would listen as much as you can 
to, to you know, James Jameson bass lines and try and, you know, decipher what he's doing and do this with any bass player, any kind of music you like. Learn from music, you know, work out the kind of underlying elements of what the bass players are doing. When it comes to James Jameson, he's the ultimate rhythm, melody, harmony. All of the the inner workings of music, he used as, uses them all. You've got those um, isolated bass lines of his, and it's, it's music on its own. You can just listen to it. And McCartney's bass lines were very influenced by James Jameson. And, you know, he remains one of the greatest bass players of all time. So listen to him, listen to McCartney, listen to anyone that you like, and try to decipher what's going on underneath and then steal those ideas for yourself. If you have any questions about anything I mentioned in that lesson, please do leave a comment below. Otherwise, please do subscribe to the channel and I'll hopefully see you on the next video.